All right, so welcome to Alaska Family Overland Adventures. Uh, we are a family of three uh, that travels Alaska. We live in Alaska, this is our backyard. And uh, this year our YouTube channel is new, and so we're still learning the ins and outs of that. But also new to the channel and to our family is our off-grid trailer Expedition 2.0. Uh, we ended up ordering this uh, and customizing it back in November of 2021 and it was built through the winter and then it was ready for pickup in 2022 uh, in the end of April and off-grid trailer has lots of options and different customizations um, I'm going to go over our trailer and explain what we chose and why we chose it and also off-grid trailers normally does ship to different places throughout the country and North America as a whole. However, shipping to Alaska wasn't much of an option, so I ended up doing a, a five-day, 4,000-mile round trip trip down to Edmonton and back to pick up our trailer. So anyway, uh, we've had it all summer. Uh, I would say including the trip back from Edmonton, we're probably well around 5,000 miles on it. Uh, we've gone around Alaska up to Prudhoe Bay, across Denali Highway, and quite a few different spots. So it's definitely asserted us well so far. There's Matthew crying it out. Um, and there's some things that we really love about this trailer, and there's some things that we wish we, maybe we had known and would have done differently. But ultimately, we're going to do a walk around and talk about some of those things. Uh, starting up here in the front of the trailer, uh, we did upgrade to the Max Coupler Hitch. Um, this is a pivoting 360 degree and swivel hitch, which allows for maximum articulation off-road. Uh, really enjoy that feature. It's been really good for us. Uh, Alaska doesn't have a whole lot of crazy off-road trails, but we do have enough that I think this option was well worth it. We've definitely taken our trailer in some places that have raised some eyebrows, like our Bellinger Pass trip, which is about to come out about the same time I'm recording this video. And definitely we were able to get in some really tight spots with the trailer due to this hitch. Uh, we did upgrade and get the spare tire. And we end up buying the 230 trash bag that goes on the spare tire. Um, being that a lot of Alaska is very, very far away from towns and communities, we wanted to make sure we had a spare tire with us. Um, I carry plug kits too, but sometimes if you just trash a tire, it's good to have a backup. And since these tires are not the same as our Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, we went ahead and got the spare tire. Coming around the passenger side here, uh, we stayed with the base model of the Dometic uh, refrigerator 12-volt fridge. Um, so far, this has been perfect for us. The only thing I would consider is if you are thinking about getting this trailer or something like this and you're looking at the options, the upgrade option is a both fridge and freezer. Uh, has a separate compartment for the freezer, whereas this is one or the other. You set the temperature either to be a fridge or a freezer, and that's all you get. Matthew's playing the drums behind me. Uh, but for us, ultimately, we, we don't really need the use of a freezer, or we haven't yet. And so just having the actual fridge itself has been, been perfectly adequate. Uh, coming around to the side, we got the 270 degree 230 awning, which we'll deploy here in a little bit, uh, since we are expecting some showers tonight. Um, but this goes around the side and the back of the trailer. And we did buy the walls for it as well to help enclose it. On the side here is kind of the galley. Now this stove and the, the sink, they, they pivot up into this box on the side. And then they come down and, and hang here. So you have a two burner stove, a fridge, and then the flat fender here kind of works as a galley space. Uh, there's a 20 or a 31 gallon water tank on here with a pump and so plenty of water in the sink here Just a simple drain system down into a bucket here uh, Really simple. No need to have a gray tank or a black tank. That's something that we really like uh, especially in Alaska the uh, The dump stations close so early in the year because of how early it freezes that basically Even though it's not so cold to the point that you can't use your tanks but you don't have any place to dump them. Here, we'll probably end up winterizing anyway for the water lines and we'll continue to camp, but like we don't have to worry about whether or not the dump stations are closed. Um, 
this is our two burner Dometic stove. Ours is actually recalled. Uh, Dometic has a recall on ours right now, but we live in Alaska and there's no official Dometic dealership or repair shop. So we're working with Dometic now to figure out how we're gonna do that. Um, likelihood is they're gonna send us a new unit. We're gonna take it to an authorized dealer. We'll be in reimbursed by Dometic and we'll send them the, this one back. Um, it's, it could have a leak in it. We've just been monitoring. We haven't smelled any prote propane or had any concerns about it. <coughs> uh, it does have a nice little stereo system on the side, marine grade speakers in the stereo. Uh, kind of fun for when you're sitting around camp and uh, listen to some tunes. Coming around the back, uh, we call this the galley or the pantry back here. Um, lots of storage space, lots of shelves. Um, my only thing, well, two things. One, I like it. It's plenty of room, has plenty of storage. These front runner boxes that you can actually get from Off Grid Wilderness Company, which is Off Grid Trailers, like retail side, they fit perfectly back here. Now these shelves do adjust up and down. The one thing I think would have been nice is if the strut systems had been mounted elsewhere and then the shelves could have actually um, pulled out. I think that would have been a nice feature. But again, Plenty of storage back here. We've been on some like multi-week trips and we've had this sucker full of food ready to go. And we've had um, like no problems at all. Coming around the driver's side, uh, we have the normal 13 pound um, tank that comes with the, uh, with, the comp with the trailer. That's been more than enough for us. This thing is super efficient. Uh, we did pay upgrade for the little shower room, which pivots out and then the walls drop down because we did get the uh, instant water heater on this side. So this is the shower instant water heater. You also get instant hot water over on the sink side there. And it's nice because it only uses a minimal amount of propane. And again, lasts quite a bit. You got 31 gallons in here. So like this weekend, we're just on an overnighter trip. If we wanted to, we could both take a hot shower and have plenty of water to go. Uh, living in Alaska, we <clears throat> did do the upgrade for the furnace. Um, we're going to be camping into the shoulder seasons here, and it'll be really nice. We've used it quite a bit already, especially with having um, a one-year-old. It's nice to be able to get in the insulated box, turn on the heater, and stay super warm throughout the night. <laughs> Up on the top of the off-grid trailer, we have our 23-0 Walkabout 62 rooftop tent. This has actually been um, a pretty nice feature. Some people wonder why we bought a, a, got a rooftop tent when it's a sleep-in trailer. Uh, for us, when it's a nice summer day and it's nice and warm here in Alaska, it's nice to be in the tent. Uh, we'll deploy this out, all of us will sleep in there, and it's a good night's sleep. Matthew, it's okay, buddy. Um, However, as the family grows, if Matthew, as we grow, as Matthew grows up, if he wants to bring friends camping, um, we have the ability to sleep, you know, three or maybe even four people in that rooftop tent, plus two or three people inside, plus the dogs. We have plenty of room. Um, to us, it was kind of a no-brainer to add it, uh, and it's actually pretty comfortable. Uh, because it is going to rain tonight, I'm probably not going to deploy it, but I'll insert some video here that shows the, the tent deployed. And the last box on the driver's side here is just storage and the battery system. So we have a couple options here. So pull some of my stuff out of the way here. So this is a dual battery, um, normal AGM wet batteries back here uh, that come standard. Now lithium is definitely the way to go if you live somewhere warm, but living in Alaska with the cold, lithium and cold don't get along. So. It is what it is. But there's our dual batteries there. Looking down back in there, I don't know if it's gonna be lighted up to see that, but there's the NOCO battery charger. Um, so when you plug in shore power, it equally charges the batteries. And then we have just the standard 1000 watt inverter. Uh, the watt, the inverter is, you can upgrade that to a bigger wattage. For us, it works well. We don't work on the road or do anything. We might charge a cell phone or two. Uh, but that's all we would use the inverter for. So it wasn't a big deal to us. Um, but some people, that's way more important. And then you have more storage space in here. And one of the things that we ended up going with or purchasing at Costco was the Goal Zero 
um, battery pack, the solar rechargeable battery pack. And that's been really good for charging all of the camera equipment and other stuff on longer trips. Also have a heater buddy in there and that just helps take off the chill either in the rooftop tent or if we have the awning out with the walls down, uh, just help take the chill off. The last thing on the outside to talk about is we did pay for the premium uh, lighting upgrade. And so every box compartment has an LED light. We have rock lights, LED lights on the side, on each side. And so as we do get into the dark season here in Alaska, these will be nice to have some light around the trailer. And again, every box has it. And even just in the summer when you have the awning out and the light kind of gets dimmed down, it's really nice to have that extra lighting. Initially, we weren't going to go with that option because in Alaska, when we camp in the summer, it's almost 24 hours of daylight. But um, it was a nice option to have in case... We're not always in Alaska, because you never know. After this, I'll go inside and show you what we did on the inside. So before I show you the inside of the trail, I'm going to show you our uh, awning, which I just deployed out. So this is the awning. It's a 270 degree awning. It's a 230. And as you can see, it completely covers the passenger side and the back of the trailer. So our pantry and our galley say hi laurel they're all nice and covered and the fridge and then the one entrance of the camper that we would use if like we were in the couch mode which i'll show you guys in a minute so this entire side stays dry now i'm not going to get out the walls but imagine if you will um two walls on the each side of this entire awning would come down to the ground at an angle enclosing the entire trailer so I think here in Alaska, if we wanted to extend our camping season into the shoulder seasons of early spring and late fall, we could probably do it with this camper and stay pretty warm. So now I'm going to show you guys the inside. All right, so starting over on the interior here, um, this is definitely a sleeping camper, uh, but it's definitely a tight quarters. This is where you might sit and eat and sleep. And not going to like hang out in here probably too long unless you really had to. However, it's still pretty nice. Um, we did a couple upgrades in here. There's the uh, Max Fan Air, the air fan. Uh, we upgraded this so it has a remote control function to it. You can set a temperature, you can set it to be in out, uh, so it can blow the air in or out. And it's all by a remote control, which is pretty nice. We did do the uh, lighting upgrade. The whole lighting upgrade package included dimmable lights on the inside, which is pretty nice. Um, at first, I didn't think it'd be a big deal to have dimmable lights, but after a couple times with our kiddo, uh, when you're trying, when you put the blackout shades over the window and you're trying to get to bed, it's nice to be able to dim the light down dim so a little guy will go to sleep, uh, but you still have some residual lighting to take care of this. Okay, so this is the main control panel for our trailer. Um, we have a remote button for the inverter, so you can turn the inverter on and off from inside the trailer without getting out. We have a bright dim button for the inside lights. Again, this is a feature that comes with the overall lighting upgrade, which again, ended up being really nice. This is just the thermostat for the heater. There's a voltmeter right here to tell you how your battery is doing. Normal plugs that you can use when the inverter is on. And then more USB ports for charging. And this is the intake and the heater vent for when the heater is on. Uh, inside here is your storage space. I'll be honest with you, this is a lot of storage. Um, we've been on a few multi-day trips. And we've had more than enough room. Uh, this weekend, we're just on a quick weekend trip. So we have some games, our hammocks, the Red Bags Matthews, duffel bag is ours. And then up in the top is all of our bedding, sleeping bags, pillows. And in the back behind the control panel are the drop down walls for the outside awning. So plenty of storage space in here as well. Uh, one of the things that we generally do before we leave is we'll put our chairs and table and other things underneath here. And when we get to camp, we'll pull it out. And if you don't need it, sometimes I'll just throw it in the back of the Jeep. So 
normally there's plenty of room. The other upgrade we did was the mattress upgrade. Um, this is about the size of a queen back here. So it's pretty good space, but ours actually pulls up and this becomes the back of the couch and that becomes the part of the couch you can sit on. And then from the other door, you can climb in and sit on the couch. And, you know, initially I thought that was kind of a silly upgrade, something that we probably wouldn't use very often. But I'll tell you what, when a cold rainstorm comes in or the bugs are really bad and you want to get out of those things, being able to get inside the heart box and sit in there comfortably has definitely been key. So it's been very nice. Um, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much the walk around. Um, oh, I should say up front here too. The last thing we got up front is we did upgrade the front wheel and front jack. Um, the standard one they said doesn't roll really well, especially over uneven ground. And the nice thing about this is it's very adjustable and it, as you can see, it rotates out of the way there for when you're driving. So that was another upgrade we did. Uh, the other thing we did is we do have a solar panel that goes with this that has the plug right here. And then this is your shore power. Um, I'll tell you what, man, that uh, the solar panel that comes with this company, the off-grid trailer, uh, it's with the Canada Proof is the brand name. So the batteries are Canada Proof and the solar panel is Canada Proof. And those two things together, uh, we did a like a 10-day trip. Um, the first leg out was six days, five nights with no shore power, but we were able to put the solar panel out for like four of the days. Our battery never even went into like the lower zones. We were always around 12.8 to 13.3 volts, which is like really nice. So overall, um, again, we're really happy with our off-grid trailer. Uh, we're really happy with the things that we upgraded. There's obviously a few other options that I would consider maybe if I lived in a different part of the country. One of those would be roughing in the ducting for air conditioning. Air conditioning is not something I'm too worried about living up here in Alaska, but at some point in time, we would definitely like to travel with this thing and be down in like the Southwest of the United States or even beyond where it could be hot and having that ability to turn the air conditioner on would probably be pretty nice. Um, so we'll have to look at some options since we didn't do that rough in, but that's something that I would consider if I lived in a warmer part of the country. Other than that, I'm really happy with the way we did it. Um, working with off-grid trailers was really easy. Um, we have no complaints or issues from the time that we ordered to the time that we picked up. Communication was good. Uh, we did have one delay for supply chain issues, which is to be expected. Uh, we were building in that post-COVID era. And so there were a couple of supply chain issues which were to be expected. Um, working with the, the crew there on picking the trailer up was really easy as well. If I have any critiques, um, I would like to say that being in Alaska was, you know, it would be really nice if there was a, an affordable shipping option to Alaska. Uh, the five day round trip trip was fun, but like that would not be an itinerary I would suggest for anybody and having an option to at least ship it to Seattle and then coordinate with some of the barges and car transport companies out of Seattle probably would have been a lot more helpful. Uh, I looked into doing it personally and it just made more sense as far as money is concerned to drive down and get it. I only spent about $1,400 in gas and was able to do it in five days. But I don't think a lot of people are going to be able to pull that off and would probably pay an extra $1,000 to have it delivered to their door, just like you can in other parts of the country.